In 1981, the world first heard about a new infection we now call HIV. We have made great progress in the fight against HIV with new powerful drugs known as antiretroviral therapy or ART that can prolong life and reduce serious disease. But an effective cure for infection is still not available. In this video, we explore the status of HIV cure research. We will introduce ideas to answer these questions. Why can't we cure HIV today? Why do we need a cure if we have art? Is it possible to cure HIV in everyone who has it and when? What cure research is happening in Canada? How does Canadian research fit with what others are doing? Where does the HIV community fit into all of this? Today, 37 million people have HIV and 39 million have already died. Only 15 million have access to the drugs that can prolong life and reduce illness. Globally, more than half of the adults with HIV are women. In Canada and North America, men who have sex with men are the largest group of people with HIV. Only one person, Timothy Brown, has ever been cured so that he no longer needs HIV drugs. Timothy had a serious cancer that required a dangerous bone marrow transplant. Doctors who gave him the transplant tried a unique gene experiment that allowed him to be cured of HIV. So far, his example has not been duplicated in any other person. His treatment could not be used in people without cancer. Still, his example launched a search to cure HIV by other methods. Donc la première question, pourquoi est-ce qu'on a besoin d'éradiquer le virus ou d'atteindre une guérison pour, pour le VIH Il y en a plusieurs. La, la première, c'est que les, les médicaments qu'on utilise pour traiter les personnes infectées par le VIH doivent être, doivent être pris à vie et qu'on sait qu'ils induisent quelques effets secondaires qui pourraient être problématiques à long terme. La seconde raison, c'est que tout le monde n'a pas accès au traitement. Il y a beaucoup de personnes, en particulier en Afrique subsaharienne, qui n'ont pas accès aux antirétroviraux. Euh, la troisième raison pour laquelle on a besoin euh, d'une guérison pour le VIH, c'est le problème de la stigmatisation et de la criminalisation des personnes qui vivent avec le virus. Euh, ces personnes sont encore criminalisées, euh, entre autres au Canada, et stigmatisées euh, parce qu'elles vivent avec le VIH. Et enfin, la quatrième raison, c'est une raison euh, euh, économique. Évidemment, l'infection par le VIH, c'est une infection qui coûte cher pour euh, le système de santé, non seulement pour les antirétroviraux, mais aussi pour le suivi des patients. Et de façon encore plus importante, on sait qu'il y a un impact économique à l'infection par le VIH, puisque les, les personnes qui sont infectées ont, ont, ont souvent des problèmes de travail pour garder leur travail, qui sont parfois d'ailleurs liés aux problèmes de stigmatisation et de criminalisation. Donc pourquoi est-ce qu'on n'a pas de guérison pour le virus C'est essentiellement dû à l'existence des, des réservoirs euh, du VIH. Euh, le virus persiste chez les personnes qui prennent des antirétroviraux, même si c'est à de très faibles niveaux. Et on connaît plusieurs mécanismes par lesquels il est capable de persister, que ce soit parce qu'il continue à se répliquer à bas bruit, peut-être dans les tissus en particulier, où on sait que les antirétroviraux ne pénètrent pas très bien. Puis il y a aussi le problème de la latence virale. Le virus est capable de se cacher et de rester endormi, je dirais, dans, dans des cellules du système immunitaire. Et de temps en temps, ce virus va se réactiver pour des raisons qu'on ne comprend pas très bien. Et quand il se réactive, il va en fait recréer une nouvelle infection. Donc on repart un peu à zéro. I remain very optimistic. Um, I think the field was, uh, as you know, was energized by the um, very inspiring finding of the Berlin patient, uh, the first uh, individual that was uh, cured from HIV infection. There were some other exciting uh, cases of, of prolonged remission, like the Mississippi baby, the two Boston patients. So I think the field is, is, was energized. There is a massive investment of research funds in this area. And, and you can start, uh, you start seeing the um, advances in basic research related to the establishment and maintenance of the reservoir that are piling up. So yes, I'm very optimistic and I hope that in the next uh, uh, several years there will be uh, a series of, of breakthrough advances that will bring us close to, to be able to cure every single HIV infected patient. So 
So CanCure stands for the Canadian HIV Cure Enterprise. It is a, a collaborative interdisciplinary group of Canada's leading HIV researcher. It consists of close to 28 basic uh, and uh, clinical scientists coming from 10 universities across Canada. Uh, finding a cure for HIV is a form formidable complex challenge that can even be done in, in isolation in a lab you need to have a really concerted effort with scientists coming from different disciplines, having the input of uh, the community living with HIV, and being able to complement other efforts that are made at the international level. And that can only be done in the context of a large team such as CanCure. Now, the CanCure scientific program is aimed at um, understanding how HIV is hiding in HIV-infected individuals that are undergoing treatment with antiretroviral therapy. CanCure is focusing on an understudied area of HIV cure research, which is to examine whether macrophages, which are cells of the immune system that kill other cells, are, constitute a viral reservoir. So in addition to that, we are also trying to exploit the knowledge that we're generating to develop strategies that could eliminate viral reservoir in individuals that are treated with antiretroviral therapy. Par ailleurs, dans un monde global et interconnecté, on ne peut pas ignorer ce qui se passe dans les pays en voie de développement où l'épidémie est extrêmement importante. Et donc, nous, au Canada, comme société développée, nous avons la responsabilité de travailler dans cet effort global contre le VIH et surtout développer des approches de guérison qui seront abordables et accessibles. Well, I think uh, the Canadian AIDS research community has a long history of, of uh, uh, punching above its weight, if you want to use a, a sport metaphor. And, and I think this uh, uh, history is continuing uh, today with the CanCure initiative that is uh, of the size and, uh, and the scientific uh, uh, gravitas comparable to the best uh, uh, US and international uh, consortia to, uh, to reach a cure for HIV AIDS. So I'm very excited to be part of it as an advisor. I think there is terrific potential and I'm really happy that the Canadian government felt that it was important to invest in this area of research. So yeah, so to start off I'd like to say that research in itself is quite rewarding because you have to understand that once you find something new, it's something that's completely novel that no one else has ever discovered and that's something that really does drive me. Uh, I, the lab that I work in is perfectly aligned to work with uh, patient samples, so we have we're very grateful to HIV infected blood donors who come by and give us blood on a very regular basis. And so therefore I can work with their blood samples directly. And so the results that I see in the lab can hopefully, because I'm working with real cells from real patients and I'm trying to understand how their uh, cells can kill HIV on a, in the plate at least in a test tube, I'm very confident that we will be able to easily translate or probably translate this kind of research into a real strategy to cure HIV a lot uh, easier than working in some animal models or otherwise because we're looking at real data relevant to real patient samples. So Tola, what do you think is the most important thing that people who have HIV should know about HIV cure research today? HIV cure research is very complex and while we've made great strides in producing some knowledge, there's still a lot of unknowns. And you know, this directly impacts you know, um, when we will actually have an HIV cure. So I think it's important for people living with HIV to understand and the community as a whole to understand that you know, we may not have an HIV cure tomorrow or in a year, then it may be some time before this cure actually is here. So, Jose, you've been doing this kind of work with HIV advocacy for a long time. You know a lot of the people, you're very knowledgeable. Why are you involved in HIV cure research? 
Ben, j'ai commencé à être impliqué en 89. J'ai été infecté en 85. On a commencé pour avoir accès à plus de médicaments. Là, on a beaucoup de médicaments, puis on commence à parler d'une cure. Puis c'est juste une ligne que tu continues dans ta vie. Puis les médicaments sont pas parfaits. Puis ce que le monde idéalement a besoin, c'est de la cure. So, Rene, you are known nationally as a great advocate, a person who has worked with a lot of organizations. How can people be involved in HIV cure research? I think that, that getting involved in the research and understanding the research really, um, it begins with a commitment to communicating and, and to, to being able to sincerely um, ask questions, to be curious, to have a willingness to stretch. So as somebody who's not a science researcher, getting involved in cure research really requires um, an effort to listen carefully and uh, to look for common ground with researchers to begin to, uh, to un unpack a little bit of what the research is telling us to better understand it. So I really appreciate when um, I meet a, re a researcher who can use analogies and help to uh, put things in simpler terms and then link that back to the what I consider complicated research language. Very that helps. Good. Wangari, you are known as a good researcher, an important researcher in HIV. What do you think that researchers who do HIV cure work need to know about the community's interest in HIV cure? HIV cure researchers need to, um, to know that communities are already having discussions around um, HIV cure research. Um, for example, um, the black community is actually in a forum with uh, uh, with black PHAs actually picked HIV uh, cure research as a priority for them. Um, but discussions are actually happening without the researchers. So they actually need to form partnerships with affected communities to ensure that uh, people are educated around the status of cure research, where it's going. The other piece they need to know is most of the affected communities have had really uh, traumatizing relationships with researchers and research institutions. So they know they have to bridge this gap where they have to build relationships and effective um, uh, relationships that are respectful, um, that recognize where communities are coming from to be able to work effectively together.